The incidence of urinary tract endometriosis ranges from 1 to 3 percent, with the majority of the incidence occurring in the bladder. This case represents a unique opportunity to manage deep infiltrating bladder endometriosis. Our patient is a 40-year-old female with a history of severe dysmenorrhea, pelvic pain, and internal pain while urinating. Ultrasound reveals a normal pelvis, but a small lesion is seen protruding into the bladder. The MRI shows that there is a lesion in the lower uterine segment, and the red arrows indicate the extent of the lesion, and the green arrow shows its penetration into the bladder wall. Urological consult is obtained, a cystoscopy is performed, and a lesion is seen in the bladder wall, approximately two centimeters in diameter. A biopsy is taken, and endometriosis is found. The patient declined. Surgical intervention and GRNH agonist was given for six months, but symptoms returned. A definite surgical plan is indicated. This includes resecting the entire bladder lesion, utilizing cystoscopic marking, and repairing the bladder and draining the bladder for 10 days. In the operating room, we use two video systems, one for the surgeon and one for the urologist. The pelvis and upper abdomen is inspected as well as the appendix. The uterus is sharply retroverted and the lesion is clearly seen here involving the bladder and the lower uterine segment. The urologist will then do a cystoscopy and utilize cystoscopic marking. A simultaneous laparoscopy and cystoscopy is performed, and here you can see the lesion through the cystoscopy view. The trigone is identified, and then ureteral stents will be inserted so that the surgeon knows where the trigone is at all times during the procedure. Here you can see that the left stent is being inserted, followed by the right side. Now the surgery will begin by marking the lesion. Here you can see the cystoscope is present and a bug B electrode is utilized by the urologist to clearly outline the lesion. This will be extremely helpful laparoscopically when entering the bladder so that the margins of the lesion can be easily seen, therefore allowing for complete resection of the lesion. Once the lesion is marked, the surgery from above can now begin. First of all, we will open the bladder peritoneum completely and then expose the dome of the bladder and start working along the sides. Now we open the right paravesical space. This is a clear area and can usually be easily dissected. Next focus is on the left paravesical space and you can see I am using a blunt dissector as well as harmonic energy. Sometimes a bladder pillar or a bladder vessel will be encountered during the dissection. If this occurs, try to avoid utilizing any electrical energy. Here the harmonic is applied to the blood vessel, activated on minimum, and gentle coagulation is performed, and now the dissection can continue. Next, the surgeon wants to free the bladder from its attachments to the cervix. You must have good margins to reapproximate the bladder wall. Once these adhesions and attachments are freed, the bladder is over distended to allow for a controlled perforation. The urologist then inserts the electrode into the most superior aspect of the lesion and then perforates the bladder. The laparoscopic surgeon can now enter superiorly, therefore marking the most upper portion of the lesion. Once the bladder is entered, the wall is grasped with an atraumatic grasper. This is a strong dissector. And now the harmonic scalpel can be inserted. I like to use a harmonic energy in this case because it is very clean and there's minimal charring. Now the bladder is entered. The Foley catheter can be seen, and later on the ureteral stents will be seen. Here you can see the line of demarcation from the cystoscopy below, and I will stay inside those lines. The stent is seen here, and now the approach is occurring from the left side. Here you can see once again the marking around the lesion, and dissection is continued under tension, 
and soon the lesion will be completely removed. Bleeding is minimal. Now that the uh, lesion is removed, you can see that there is a good edge by the cervix and the Foley catheter and the ureteral stents can be seen. Utilizing a 3-0 monocryl or 3-0 vicryl, the first layer is closed in a running non-locking type fashion. The knot should be incorporated into the abdominal cavity and not into the bladder itself. Permanent shoots are, should never be utilized. The mucosa is included with the first layer. Gentle traction on the tissue is very important. Closure is continued in a running non-locking type fashion. As you can see here, the edges are approximating very nicely. Gentle tissue handling is very important. After the first layer is closed, a second imbricating layer is then performed utilizing the same suture. However, the mucosa is not incorporated in this layer. Now we are nearing the end of closure of the second layer. The bladder is filled, ensuring that there is no leakage. The patient is discharged home the next morning with a Foley catheter in minimal pain. A retrograde cystogram is performed 10 days later and under low pressure there is no leakage and under normal pressures the bladder shows no leakage. Thank you very much.